You are learning ethical hacking. You want to test new tools, try new scripts and learn fast. But here's the moment that messes up even smart hackers. You find a tool, it seems useful and you are tempted to run it. But how do you know it's safe? In this video, I'll show you how to build the safest possible environment to analyze and explore hacking tools without compromising your system. Now, this isn't a green light to run every script you find online. This is only a way to learn safely, with control and avoid irreversible damage. So, let's walk through it step by step, starting with the problem that we are solving. Most people don't run hacking tools inside a secure environment. They just clone a GitHub repo and run it. No context, no isolation. And that's risky. Even if you don't run things as root, scripts can fingerprint your system, access sensitive files and connect to the internet without you noticing. That's why today we are building something stronger, an isolated hacking sandbox using Docker that runs without root and has no internet by default. First, we need to set up your system the right way and we are going to assume that you don't have anything installed. The first tool that we will install is Docker, so if you already have Docker installed, go ahead and skip this part. But if not, here's how to install the latest secure version. By the way, we can run these commands from anywhere on our terminal. So the first command that we need to, to run is the update command because we need to have our system updated. Now let's install the essential tools to securely add Docker. So the command is this one here. Okay, it seems that I already have the newest version of these tools. Next, we will create a keyring directory. Let's do it. Now, this creates a secure folder uh, called keyrings, as you can see here. This is where trusted software keys are stored. So let's enter. Okay, it's done. Now we will download and verify Docker's GPG key with this command. By the way, guys, if you see no output when running this command, that's not a problem at all. So if you want to verify if this command worked, you just need to run this command here. And if you see this output, you are good to go. Now let's add our Docker's repository on our system. To do that, we run this command here. And now let's update once again our system to do apt update like so. And now we can install our Docker in Docker Compose. So to do that, we run this command here. And done, Docker is now properly installed. Now with Docker ready, let's build our isolated hacking container with no roots and no internet. So first we create a new directory where everything related to your secure hacking environment is organized. So let's do it. So as you can see, this creates a directory and after that changes into that directory. Now inside of hacking sandbox, we will create a new directory called results. In this directory will be used to save everything that you want. So for instance, imagine that you run LeanPs on uh, your Docker. Then you can save the output of that script on your results directory. So this is useful if you are for example, using these for bug bounties and you need to write a report, then you can have everything that uh, you found in the results directory. OK, now also inside of the hacking sandbox, we will create our Docker file. So let's do it. Touch Docker file and let's uh, use Nano. And I will paste this information here, but don't worry because I will leave everything down below. So the first line here tells our Docker to use Kali Linux as the base image. This creates a new non-root user called Sandbox. This will install basic tools. This will run those tools without root permissions. So with the Sandbox permissions, which is a basic user. This here uh, sets the default working directory inside the container and the cmd bash starts the container with a bash terminal. So we save these changes. 
And lastly, we create our docker compose.yml file. So we use nano, touch, sorry, then nano, and we paste this information. Now, let me tell you that this file tells docker how to launch it, what settings to apply, and what files to connect. We save the changes. Let's see, add docker compose, and okay, it's all good. Now that our configuration is ready, let's build the container and launch it safely. Now, to build the container, we run this command, docker compose build. Now, what this command does is, it reads the docker file, which is this one, the one that we created, then builds the image based on Kali and prepares your container. Ok, our container is built and we are good to go, we just need to start the docker and to do that we run this command here, docker compose run Kali. Ok guys, it seems that we are now inside of our sandbox, however, I have here a mistake that I need to correct. So inside of the docker compose file, I have a line where I, I say the version and it seems that now that is obsolete, so we need to retrieve that line. So let's do that here, so nano docker compose and retrieve this line here. It seems that the new version of compose doesn't uh, require us to insert the version, okay? Save, let's confirm with cat docker, sorry, docker dash compose, okay, done. Ok, we are now inside of our docker called sandbox, as you can see, and currently our sandbox doesn't have internet connectivity because we said so. So if you go to your docker compose file, you will see that we enabled the none internet connectivity. Let's see if we don't have internet connectivity by pinging Google. Ping dash C, we will s uh, send three packets, Google dot um, let's see. Temporary failure in name resolution. And this happens because we don't have internet connectivity. Now let's enable our internet connectivity so you can see the difference. And also, we only do this if, for instance, we need to download the script like Limpies. Okay, guys? Other than that, we always have the internet uh, disabled. So let's go back to our Docker Compose file, use nano. And where it says network mode bridge, we remove the number sign and we add a number sign on network mode none. Now, what we are doing uh, here is we are enabling the network mode bridge, which will give us internet connectivity, and we are disabling the network mode none, uh, which takes, takes off internet. Okay, so let's save this. After doing this, we need uh, to rebuild our docker and to do that, we need to use the following command. Docker compose build, it's built and now docker compose run, ok? And you will see the difference. And we are now inside of our sandbox. Now let's ping once again Google. Ping dash C and let's send three packets. Google dot com and here we have internet connectivity guys this is amazing our docker has internet connectivity now we can download the scripts that we need but after that we need to disable the internet connectivity because the purpose of our docker is to stay safe so to do that we just need to edit once again our docker compose file so let's do that so to disable the internet, we go back to our hacking sandbox directory and we edit our docker compose. Then we retrieve the number sign from here and we add a number sign here. We save the changes and we need to run the docker compose build once again and the docker compose run Kali, like so. Now we have another sandbox without internet connectivity but we can use the scripts that we downloaded okay guys in a safe way 
This step of enabling and disabling the internet is manual on purpose because you want to be aware of when your container reaches the internet. Now, imagine that you are hacking and you need to make a report and save the data that you find. Then you can save that data in a file. So you can use, for instance, sorry, nano. Then let's say report.txt. Imagine ran and map and found ports 22 and 8080 80 open. This is, this is just an example. You save this, yes, and then you move the report.txt into the results directory. So move report into results. Now, if you go to your hacking sandbox directory, do LNDS, sorry, and change into the results directory, cd results list you will have there the report. So that report, let's see if it has the same contents that I wrote. Ran and map and found boards 22 and 8080 open. So as you can see, this works very well. You only save what you want uh, for your reports. After this, if you want to exit your sandbox, you just need to run the command exit like so. And to delete all the containers, we run the following command, which is docker compose down remove orphans, and this will keep your system clean. Now, after exiting your sandbox and cleaning your system, you can always go back to your sandbox by running the same command, which is docker compose run Kali. Remember that you need to always be inside of hacking sandbox directory okay guys so you run it and you are inside of it you exit you clean your system and done now every time that you want to access your sandbox instead of running every time this command this full command we can create an alias on our zshrc file to do that we need to use nano so nano.zshrc file like so we will add the alias on the last line. So let's do it. Okay. So the alias is this one here. Now, every time that we want to access our sandbox, instead of running this command, we just need to use hack box. It's very simple. We save. We reinforce the changes. Source zshrc. Now, let's see. TD hacking sandbox because you only uh, you can only access your sandbox if you are inside of the directory hacking sandbox where we have all the information to launch our sandbox and hack box like so and let's see and here we have now we have our sandbox and we didn't need to write that full command so let's exit this there's another matter that I want to talk about with you, which is if you want to use graphical user interface tools, you have to run those on your VM. And this is because your container doesn't work with graphical user interface tools, which is the case of Burp Suite, Firefox, Postman. Instead, the container is only for scripts. You download the script, you use the script, and that's it on your container. On your VM, all graphical user interface tools. Now your environment is set, but before we go, one last critical reminder. You've built a safe hacking environment, but that doesn't mean you should run every script you find. Even with a sandbox, you should check the source, uh, read the code, and if you can't, use ChatGPT and think twice. Docker gives you isolation, not immunity, so use this to test tools safely, to learn to build good habits because that's the real power of this setup if this video helped you drop a like and subscribe and let me know in the commentary section down below if you have any questions or suggestions also i will leave everything that i used in the description down below thank you for watching see you next time stay curious and stay safe bye bye